Hi everyone, this is Justin Gray from Synthesis Sound and Immersive Mastering. Today I'm going to be doing the second of a series of videos dedicated to Dolby Atmos music production. In these videos, my goal is really to draw attention to and bring light to the potential of this immersive audio music format and engage everyone from listeners to content creators, producers, and artists to you know being inspired to create music in this format. If you like the videos, if you like the channel, please do subscribe, keep in touch, write some questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, there is a first video that I would suggest that if you haven't seen, you go to my channel. There's a long format video and a short video. Even the short one will just get you up to speed on some of the things that we'll be building upon this week. Uh, the concept of using binaural audio for the delivery over headphones of immersive audio. Um, the comparison between stereo you know, traditional stereo and virtualized immersive audio, things along those lines um, that you may or may not be familiar with. Anyways, as we move forward, uh, we're going to be listening today to a different section of the same song as the first video. This is New Horizons. Uh, it's one of my own pieces of music and recordings, and it's from the band Justin Gray and Synthesis. As we go through uh, soloing some of the players, I, I do want to draw attention to who's playing this, uh, this music. They're doing such a lovely job. And I also, in this video, I want to explain uh, not only doing some more of those stereo to binaural comparisons, but also explain a bit more about preparing your music for this format and some of the under the hood things to just even further understand what the Dolby Atmos music um, ecosystem is capable of. So right off the bat, um, you've seen this before, but I'm going to be using the Dolby Atmos renderer here to set up our headphone send, which is what you're listening to, as a binaural headphone send. Now, before I press play, if you're not wearing headphones, this video really does require headphones to work. Um, I explained this more in the last video, so I won't repeat myself, but binaural audio is a headphone dedicated audio format for delivering 3D or immersive audio, and it really does only work properly over headphones. So here comes... Uh, New Horizons. We're just going to listen to the first section of it, then go back and listen to it in the more uh, traditional stereo format for comparison. So let's stop there for a second. I'm going to now switch over to a traditional stereo listening experience and we'll listen to the same section. Let's go right from there, right back into the virtualized immersive audio listening. from there back to stereo
and back finally to virtualized immersive audio again. So, as you were seeing, and for instance, if I was to press play, you're going to see all of these little green spheres. Covered this uh, in the first lecture as well, but um, what those are representing are objects, and that's really what we have to understand and is, is allowing this immersive audio experience um, to become what it is. So just check this out. Now, when I say that I'm going between binaural and stereo, what's happening here and what's important to understand is that here in the Dolby Atmos renderer, this is essentially my speaker playback processing tool in the sense that I'm actually sending Pro Tools um, over Pro Tools HDX rather than the traditional format where that's going straight to my speakers. I'm actually sending all of this content into the renderer and the renderer is then sending to my speakers. Now, the renderer is also doing something else. It's processing all of this object information. I'm going to save some of those technicalities for, for videos to come because I, I want to stay focused on the basics right now. But what is unbelievable about this format and very important to understand is that when I go between stereo and this virtualized immersive audio that I'm describing uh, over headphones, this is all happening in the monitoring section and, and what's called fold downs. So in the world of, um, of surround listening, there has always been the concept of folding down, folding multi-channel into lesser channels. 5-1 to stereo, 5-1 to mono, 7-1 to stereo, 7-1 to mono. What is truly unbelievable about this format is not only how well that works, I mean, in the sense that when I'm mixing this format, I'm typically not wearing headphones the majority of the time. I'm doing that for the video, and I'm also doing that because binaural is a major consideration for this format. But in this uh, mixing room, which I, you know, you can see photos of at, at my website, synthesissound.com or immersivemastering.com, uh, and I did show one in the last video. I'm working in a 714 array, which is a 12-channel speaker system, and that is the standard for preparing and mixing and mastering Dolby Atmos music. However, this format does not need to be listened to in this specific speaker array. It can be folded down. Now, I explained that in, in more detail in the first video, but what is fascinating is that if we choose to, to produce music in this format, then we don't necessarily have to go and make new mixes for all of these other formats which was always a massive undertaking in previous uh, surround or even just alternate, like binaural and stereo, for instance, having to make a brand new mix. I will say that if I was, you know, when I release this album, um, I will do a tailored stereo mix where I only monitor in stereo and I do tailor things for that. I would do a tailored mix for 5.1. I would do a tailored mix for binaural and a tailored mix for 7.1.4. And uh, if if allowed the time to do so, but in many ways it's not actually even necessary, and the fold downs that happen automatically are quite inspiringly good. So just to say, when I'm going between, you know, binaural and stereo, that is no small feat, and uh, the Dolby Atmos ecosystem is covering all of that. So when we deliver this format in the future. Um, it can be played back on all varieties of systems. And as the ecosystem for user listening expands, which it's happening uh, you know, very quickly, uh, the, the playback systems will be able to basically tell the technology what the user is listening on and therefore which version of this Dolby Atmos file they should listen to. Truly unbelievable. Anyways, 
Um, let's move on and, and listen to a couple of the elements. What I want to draw your attention to here is, even though this is immersive audio and it's you know 714 and all of these things, multi-channel, I want to draw your attention to the majority of the stems and the majority of the parts in this music are mono and stereo. Uh, that's because that's how they were recorded. Um, I'm going to talk about the deliverables last and how you can prepare your music for this format, but um, I just want to you know, remind you that it, it's not a total departure from the music production that we're used to. And so these are you know, mono and stereo tracks of strings and bass and guitar. Now, that said, I want to use the drums and show you something cool that I did in this format that's possible. I took the stereo drum stem from this, from this mix, and I'm using a plug-in called, um, here, just a second, using a plug-in by Nugent Audio, which is called the Halo Up Mix. Now, I have the immersive audio version of this, and I can therefore take a stereo stem, and I can expand it into a... Uh, 10 channel in this context, 712, a, a 10 channel version. Now, these up mixers are traditionally designed for sort of post production uh, to actually be able to take entire mixes or entire productions and fold them up and fold them down and sort of do what the Dolby Atmos renderer is doing um, and, and do it with excellent cohesion. And by that, I mean, one of the big challenges with trying to do this is when you fold it down or you fold it up, things get lost. Mono compatibility it becomes a disaster. The, the tools that we're working with in these days are, are truly monumental. And so what I've done is I've taken the drums and I've actually expanded the drums to be able to be in all speakers using this technique. Uh, that then allows me to use uh, something like this tool, which is a uh, again, a 10-channel equalizer, compressor, and uh, transient designer. And on top of that, I can then use my dedicated series of, of multi-channel reverbs and delays. So I'm not using delay on the drums per se, but you know, using actual 712, which is uh, the, the maximum, the 10-channel sort of bed track in Pro Tools, so what I want to do is I want to just play the drums, and I want to go between the binaural immersive audio and the stereo version of just the drums. We can sort of hear what happens. I think it's quite, uh, quite fun. The drummer, by the way, is my brother Derek Gray. Thanks, Derek, for killing this groove. And let's hear it expanded. So we are starting in binaural, and let's, uh, let's see how it sounds. This is with reverbs on. You can see those reverbs being processed here. So just gonna switch it over to stereo and let's hear where it started. Now, there is a volume differential. I recognize that. The amount of things that have to happen all at once and, and the changes to be able to do these demonstrations uh, doesn't allow me to gain match them and do them in a time frame that you can experience it properly. So I just want you to not so much focus on the loudness difference because, of course, that's going to make one sound stronger than the other, but rather just the space and what it does. So once again, here's stereo, and then I'll very quickly... Uh, get back to the immersive audio version. Remember, this is how we're used to listening to drums in headphones. And switching over. And here's that 10 channel drum bed. It really comes to life in hearing the reverb space around us, like we're in a, like we're in a room.
feeling like the toms and everything are, are surrounding us. So this is, this is the drums. That's, you know, you don't have to do these things, but that's a specific technique that becomes possible. And, and I felt as though because the drums play such a, a crucial role here that I wanted to have the drums surround me and then the tablas, which are the North Indian percussion instrument, as we did, we saw, we heard these tablas in the first video, but I've taken these tablas and, and I've turned them into objects. And those objects now get to go up here. This is something where in stereo with left and right channels, working to combine these objects and, and sorry, working to combine these signals, obviously it works. I mean, stereo music is stereo music. It's the, the, the pinnacle of our, of our musical history is in mono and stereo. But there's a new opportunity here to create this space uh, between them that's quite unique. So let's just listen to tablas and drums. Uh, I'm in binaural now, so we're in the immersive version. Check out that the tablas are, are up here. And again, going to switch over. Tablas come down, left and right. And the drum reverb ends up being more localized in front of me. And right back. And here we go with the immersive audio. So really, it, it is not just, um, as with all music production, it's not just where I've panned things and just where I've been able to put them, but the fact that the reverbs now get to have all of this space. Uh, and, and that's where, even in situations like this, where I'm being relatively aggressive with the panning, I'm moving things out of where it's traditionally going to be panned, um, it's the reverbs that can actually create such a natural experience. Um, for instance, at this at this point, some of the strongest, you know, highest quality uh, content in immersive audio does still exist within the classical realm, and it's important to remember, like within that classical music realm, a lot of times the content has actually been recorded with microphones dedicated to each speaker. So this is now actually becoming a playback system for uh, you know, advanced multi-channel mic techniques to present classical music as though you were in the room. This is, this is using it in a more you know, contemporary mixing context to, to use things that have been recorded separate, separately and in isolation to be able to create a world um, that is somewhat surreal. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Again, we could try and make it very, very realistic and make sound stages. I mean... Essentially, the opportunity here is to create, an, uh, you know, again, a spherical space, space around us. And, and uh, the reverbs are doing some really heavy lifting in this context um, on certain things. In you know, future videos, I'll cover more about different reverbs if, if we want to get into that. And um, delay, for instance, the ability to have delays moving around us. And again, those are, those are modern techniques, but they don't have to be. What I want to stress about what we've been listening to right now is even though in the first video I was showing you that sarangi flying around our head, which is which is fun and awesome, and I will do lots of that throughout this record and probably do lots of it in many of my productions when it's appropriate. But what we're listening to today is all static placement. This is just panning. Just moving things into the space and having them sit there as objects, just that alone helps to spatialize things in what I find to be a very inspiring uh, format. The other thing I'm going to show you today uh, in this is just look at the strings uh, in a similar comparison. So 
Let's find an appropriate section of the strings. Right now I'm, I'm in binaural, so we'll be listening to it in immersive. Um, so I'll come to this section here. Uh, yeah, we've got, we've got sort of a bunch of layers that happen in and around this section. Here's the first of the, of the four string beds. And again, these are just stereo tracks. Stereo tracks from my original stereo mix that I printed out as stems that I'm now using. Um, what I've done is I've turned the strings into objects, so you're going to see this first set of strings as the green dots that appear in that uh, box. <laughs> Now I'm going to bring in the second layer, up high, and, and a little bit back. Bringing in another layer. Let's do the same thing. By the way, this is uh, the Venuti String Quartet. Uh, Drew Jureka is, is in the band playing violin, and then uh, his unbelievable string quartet uh, played these parts to which I'm really grateful. Rebecca Wolkstein uh, on, vi on the second violin and Shannon Knight playing viola and Lydia Munchinski playing cello. So now I'm going over to stereo. And I'll do the same thing. Let's bring things in and experience how that layering happens in, in a stereo format. Bring in the second layer. And the third layer. Okay, and now all three layers in the virtualized format. So once again, it's not just the panning information, and, and that's being you know done in this format by turning these into objects that I can place in this in this uh, space, but also the fact that the reverbs are now being allowed to to breathe. So let's just listen to that section with all the instruments up, and then uh, I want to just finish up with with describing how we can get your music into this into this format really easily. We'll save this section for another video. Um, already lots to digest here. Uh, I will say, Ed Hanley's playing the tabla, Ted Quinlan's playing the guitar, uh, now that we've covered all the people you're, you're listening to. So let's finish up by just discussing what, what is it that you need to deliver? What is it, you know, and I want, want to stress that it's really quite easy. In this context, I've finished a stereo record. This is a record that's out in the world right now. Um, and it's, it's, it's mastered. I went back to the mixes, I printed my stems, I muted the reverbs, um, except on certain sources where I felt like it was integral to the sound, and I just printed mono and stereo stems. It's very much like delivering for a, a film remix, um, which is where you, know, you make your film stems uh, as a composer and then you deliver it to a soundstage to be integrated into the movie. That's a really easy way to do this. In fact, I enjoy using... Um, you know, st stereo hardware equipment and things like that for my sound production. And, and I would 
encourage the idea in many ways of, in, in a contemporary context like this, preparing your stems, doing a mix, doing a stereo mix, potentially even releasing the music if, if you're you know so inclined, and then, and then delivering those to be put into the Atmos format. Now, as I said before, though, it's also possible to start in Atmos and then build your immersive audio version and then separately tailor the stereo fold downs, tailor this fold downs, tailor that fold down. So we can also start to integrate this into one process, which of course is good for cost, it's good for time. Um, and you know, as, as the videos go on, I think I can continue to discuss the, some of the, the parameters around how we can, you know, make this a really accessible format to make music in. Um, and, and that's really one of my goals with, with equipping my studio in the way that I have. So that's this. Now, of course, as I said, there's also some really inspiring notions towards designing music for multi-channel systems and for immersive audio, thinking about your music from the ground up in this format, composing in from the ground up. And the one thing that I did notice from you know my first video and some of the feedback was that there's a lot uh, of people out there who, who don't have multi-channel systems to be able to sort of uh, author, which means to basically master in this format, but who, who want to create in the format and should create in the format. And by doing that in binaural, which is this headphone format that we're, work, that we're listening to in today, you could be working in the Dolby Atmos format in binaural and then you know, working with someone like myself to then take that and, and essentially you know, mix slash master it into, into a, you know, a full-on deliverable Dolby Atmos file that has this ability to go out into the world as this, this flexible flexible immersive sphere of audio that can be played back in so many ways that really is a segue into what i want to cover in the next uh video so keep in touch for that i want to discuss what it means to master in this format what it means to mix in this format where the lines are and just listen to more examples so that we can have uh have fun doing that and, and just get deeper into understanding how this works so once again thank you for watching please do subscribe uh, i look forward to connecting with you and if you'd like to hear more from uh, this band, please check out Justin Gray and Synthesis. And for my um, sort of music and production, synthesissound.com or immersivemastering.com. Thanks so much. Have a great day.